What I'm seeing is that I would love for him to get some type of therapy when it comes to his drinking. Ryan Garcia's odd behavior has led his father, Henry Garcia, to come forward and ask for help due to his son's drinking problem. Going into the PED controversy, Garcia has blamed Coach Scooter for giving him the contaminated supplements. Ryan would go on to say that Judah is friends with Haney, pointing towards some collaboration plot between the pair to bring him down. He posted, So Scooter is the one that gave me supplements that were tainted. He was the guy who was the strength and conditioner for Zab Judah, and he knew he was helping me lose weight on the last day. That's how they all of a sudden knew I was going to test positive, so sick and sad. However, coming to Scooter's defense, the former welterweight champion Zab Judah vouched for his innocence. While working alongside him, Judah claimed that he had never tested positive for PEDs. In 1998, me and Scooter won the junior welterweight championship we never failed a drug test, ever. Ryan Garcia, 6X, undisputed. Clarissa Shields also came forward in support of Scooter posting, and I work with Scooter too and never failed a drug test. Been working with him for years. Shields then asked Ask Garcia to stop using the social media platform to mislead people. Furthermore, she asked Garcia to look in the mirror rather than pointing the finger at everyone else for his current predicament. She posted, Man, Ryan Garcia, you are a piece of shit. You use your platform to lie and mislead the people. It's sad. And now that your roller coaster is going down, you are pointing the finger at everyone else. Go look in the mirror. You are the problem. You are the reason. Stop using God to make excuses for you being a terrible person. The jig is up. Go get help. Coach Scooter also did denied the accusations, saying that he was there only hours before the fight, just to cut Ryan's weight, and didn't even touch any of his supplements. Coach, no, I well, had nothing to do with that. Him, I just came in, in for 11 yeah. hours, right, for the, for the um, weight cut. I touched nothing of his supplements, nothing. Did I rehydrate him? I can tell you what I rehydrated with him. Yeah, all Vada tested, all good. Nutribio carb, it's all, you know what I mean? I worked, used the same stuff with Hutchinson, Danny Jacobs, Canelo. So that in my hand is don't have nothing to do with it. So, so basically, so basically, if Ryan Garcia was to test positive anything, you had nothing to do with that because you don't know what he took before no, the camp. No, I, I came in to drop his weight. That's all. Right. They asked me to do something. Ryan Garcia was then seen in a heated debate with Devin's father, Bill Haney, regarding Garcia's doping scandal. When did you take the supplement? I told you that day. And you took the and you took the supplement during the fight? How can I take a supplement during the fight? I'm saying the day of the fight? Because you tested positive both days. Exactly. Don't you think it would still be in your system? Think with your brain. It would still be in your system no matter what. If it, if it, it, it's not going to be next day. Which During the argument, Garcia didn't hold back, addressing Bill Haney's question head on. The tension between the two was notable as they discussed the doping incident. Garcia maintained his innocence, stating, I told you that day because you tested positive both days. Exactly. You don't think it would still be in your system? Bill Haney asked for a few details about the supplements. Garcia revealed that he wasn't aware of them, so the latter wondered whether King Ree had any knowledge about the sort of supplements Scooter gave him. Garcia added, Scooter is the one that gave me the supplements. I will always stand by the the truth. Scooter gave me the supplements, and then I tested positive point blank, period. There is no bigger story. They are the ones the lawyers have, the ones he provided me with. We sent that to a lab, they tested it, and it was tested with Osterine in its, uh, tablets, so my thing was tainted, which there's no doubt in my mind. But Bill Haney persisted. He wanted to know which company supplements Ryan received. However, there was no change in Garcia's answer, who continued to say that he doesn't know. What was the, su what was the supplements, man? My name was the one that they test. I, I don't know which one it was. Those are the ones wait, I didn't have no knowledge wait, of. Wait, okay, so let me let me just tell you which ones, which ones. So we know that which no sort of world would know not to use the supplements. Which supplements were they? I, I, like I said, I don't know which supplements. Those are his supplements. <laughs> Wait, wait, no, hold on, no, Scooter, Bill Haney then checked whether the supplements that Ryan received caused weight loss. Ryan Garcia replied in the negative. Bill asked, so why did you say that everyone, um, you know, had contaminated that Victor Conte, that Bill, that me, that everybody? Ryan replied to this by saying, I'm very skeptical. I'm still to this day. I'm skeptical a man that got Che, that that was banned from another sport, is helping you out. Um, Devin Haney is in. Your son has gained, has gained. He can lose so much weight, but then gain so much weight, and then still fight for 12 rounds. 
In response, Garcia questioned why the authorities hadn't turned his son's records null and void. After all, he went beyond the prescribed weight limits. Bill Haney argued back that there are no such stipulations, but King Rye insisted that Devin Haney had been a weight bully since their amateur days. Question, why isn't Devin Haney's record non and void? Because he went over the, the, the legal weight limit that you can gain. There's, no, like there's no fucking such thing going over. The they, legal, that's the what legal, they're saying. The legal weight limit. Because listen, if, listen, Devin if you go Devin Haney has right. been a weight Hello? bully his whole ask, career. I want, Even in the amateur. Sure, he was a weight they, bully. Wh wh the debate also touched on broader issues of fairness in doping enforcement. Garcia compared his suspension to those of other fighters, noting discrepancies in punishments. Hey, Oscar Valdez got popped, and guess what? He got zero suspension. Shane Mosley got popped, zero suspension. Canelo mm -hmm. gets popped six months. I get popped a year. You so know why? You know why? It's just diff the, the, but the, but different the rules. The commission. I had the commission a billion looked up, grand. The commission looked I had up. A, the commission. You know how much a billion gram is, Bill? You could get take a salt, a little salt, no. put it in, in, in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and that's what I had. Eddie Hearn was asked about Ryan's claims regarding Coach Scooter, to which Hearn responded in a worrying manner. Hearn says that Ryan needs help, and someone has to get hold of him before it gets too late. So Bill, uh, anything over what's been going on with him and Zab Judah and Ryan's situation? No, I mean, I saw some stuff tonight. I can't believe what I'm seeing. From Ryan's side or yeah, from, from Ryan? I mean, what, Clarissa Shields with this what the fuck's he doing? <laughs> Honestly, he's got something, something bad is going to happen. If someone don't get older, Ryan Garcia, I keep saying it. And, you know, you may play these clips back when something bad happens. Like, it's just, it's just a car crash. He, uh, he fired, I guess, I don't know if that's the problem that he fired. Lupe, his, uh, yeah. Yeah, Lupe, but like, Valencia then, uh, moving on, you know, the, the situation what happened with Caleb, Caleb Plant, and then he said since he's going to be suspended for a year, he's going to be... And I quote, petty about this whole situation. I don't know, what do you think is going to happen? I just say he just needs help. Hearn is also worried about Garcia's career after the one-year ban verdict. He wonders if he goes to Australia to fight, but also thinks that all this situation is a big mess. Ryan will sit out for a year. My worry with Ryan is what happens in that year. I don't think it's his carbon copy of, I'll chill out and I'll start training in nine months and I'll see you in a year. He's gonna have to deal with a lot of shit along the way now, and I, I worry for him. And I think Devin might end up sitting out, to be honest with you. Like, I don't see him taking a Sandor Martin fight um, at the same time. I don't think that, um, you know, would, would he go to Australia to fight Paro? I mean, the, the Ryan Garcia fight is a big fight, that rematch, when it comes back around. But will Ryan even return to boxing? I don't know. But it's a right fucking mess, to be honest with you. That's the reality of the situation. Hearn was also asked about the damages Ryan Garcia will be facing commercially after these steroid allegations. Eddie thinks that it doesn't affect Garcia commercially because more people are now concerned about what happens next, so Garcia will be fine. He stated, In terms of commercial value, I don't actually think it really affects him. Some might not like that, some might not think it's sad, but that's the reality. More people are talking about him. More people are fascinated by his implosion. More people want to see him, potentially see him fight, or what happens next, so Ryan will be fine commercially. But Ryan wasn't very fond of Hearn commenting regarding this situation. Ryan took to X and thrashed Hearn saying that it's not him that needs help. Ryan posted, No, Eddie Hearn, I don't need help. You need help with your promotion company. You know I was done wrong, just admit it. That's nothing crazy about that. You judge me when the people you are defending are coming at me as well. Guess you come from the school of being a hypocrite. Stephen A. Smith asked Ryan Garcia a rhetorical question and gave scary advice for his career. Smith simply doesn't understand how Garcia could throw such a promising career out the window. If he he obeyed the rules and did things right, he would be on his way to a rematch with Gervonta Davis right now. Smith was actually sympathetic with Garcia about his initial loss to Tank, saying that a liver shot could knock out just about anyone, and that Garcia wasn't overly dominated in that fight. But maybe, just maybe, if you follow rules and regulations, and you won, and you went and took Devin Haney's title at the 140-pound weight class, and you weren't acting all crazy, maybe we would be in the midst of a rematch between you and Javante Davis right now since it was really a body shot to deliver that took you out. That could happen to anybody. It wasn't like he beat you up. It wasn't like he slapped you around the way he did Frank Martin. But with all of this stuff you're doing, Ryan Garcia, it makes no sense. It makes no Smith then floats the possibility of Garcia heading to Saudi Arabia to get around his suspension. It's unclear if that's a real possibility or not, but Garcia has a lot to think about at the moment. What other governing bodies in other states may do? What you going to end up doing? Wanting to go to Saudi Arabia to fight? Lomachenko's in there. Shakur Stevenson is in there. 
Alexia Fimo Lopez is in there. Javante Davis might stay at 135. He might move up. Come on, there's a lot of compelling fights. What's up? And if you get so cocked, Diesel, and you get so big, well, guess what? Just move up to the welterweight division at 147. Terrence Crawford is waiting. He waiting. What are we doing here? Ryan's father, Henry Garcia, says Ryan speaks more with his mom than he does with him, but he's hoping that he can get help for his drinking and be ready to resume his career in the next 10 months when his suspension is over. How is Ryan doing? I know from social media, it seems that he's having a difficult time with everything, but when's the last time you spoke to Ryan and how is he doing? Well, I haven't spoken to Ryan in a long time, but um, uh, he speaks to his mother more than me, <laughs> you know, but it's okay. Um, he, he'll call me when he wants to, but what I'm seeing is that I would love for him to get some type of therapy when it comes to his drinking, you know? I mean, I'm being real, you know? He says he can control it, well, I hope he, he, he can, but if he doesn't, that's what I'm talking about, get that therapy so that... However, Ryan has declined these claims, saying that he doesn't drink anymore, and his father is not aware of his situation. He took to X and posted, I don't even drink anymore. My dad doesn't know what he is talking about. I literally was just talking to him, and he has apologized. We can't say if Ryan's claims are true or not, considering his recent behavior is anything but normal. Garcia's father had been involved with the recent Haney win, which has since been overturned after the New York Commission punished Ryan for using Osterine before the fight. Henry says that this decision has hurt Ryan a lot, and everybody accusing him of taking steroids intentionally is wrong, considering that it was a supplement contamination as per the Garcias. Henry stated, He did say something to his mother and I was around when he said it. He said he's pretty bummed out about everyone attacking him and saying he did something on purpose, which it wasn't. It was just a contamination of a supplement. UFC President Dana White was also asked about Ryan's situation. Despite insisting that it's none of his business, Dana came to the support of the down-on-his-luck Ryan Garcia. Discussing the matter during the UFC 303 post-fight press conference, White was adamant that the boxer hadn't intentionally taken an illegal substance. What were your thoughts on Ryan Garcia? He was acting crazy up until the fight. Goes out there, beats Devin Haney, tested positive. What were your thoughts on this whole fiasco? Well, first of all, none of that is any of my business. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not my card. It's not my whatever. But I think that with all... You know I hate talking about drug testing, but with all of our knowledge that we have in the years that we've been drug testing, we believe the people who handle the drug testing that he had tainted, he, he took a tainted supplement and that he did not cheat. And, you know, if he had the right people around him and had the right, you know, that wouldn't have happened. We, we, we're, we're pretty confident it was a tainted supplement. I got no skin in this game. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? It's not my fight. It's not none of my business and not my place to even talk about it. But from what my team tells me, and these guys are the fucking best, tainted supplement. Seeing the support from the UFC president, Ryan quickly thanked him, considering that he has talked about joining the UFC several times now. So Dana, I've never said this publicly, but I officially want to enter the UFC and I want to do it legitimately against, let's say, Probably a C-level fighter at first. Yeah, you have to. Get, get my whistle wet, f*** his mouth, and then, you know, take on somebody else. Meanwhile, Sean O'Malley firmly believes he can defeat Ryan Garcia in both boxing and a real-life confrontation. Recently, the UFC bantamweight champion has discussed facing Kingry more frequently than his upcoming opponent, Marab Davalishvili. In a recent podcast episode featuring Jake Paul, he discussed his potential to defeat the 25-year-old boxer. He said that Ryan has a lot better chances of beating him in a boxing match than he does in a real fight, but he revealed that he can box and can throw hands, so he doesn't think it would be easy by any means. Moreover, he does think it's possible that he can beat Garcia. I mean, there's only one way to find out. He has a lot better chances of beating me in a boxing match than he does in a real fight. You think you'll keep up? I do. I, I fucking, I truly believe in myself. That's how I got to the fucking position I'm in right now. I can box, I can throw hands. Um, I don't think it'd be easy by any means. I do think it's possible I beat him. I'm not saying my, my odds are great, but I do. Khalil Roundtree also showed his respect for the skills and work ethic needed by a high-performing fighter like Garcia. The UFC light heavyweight fighter outlined the path King Rai should follow to enter MMA. He stated, I think adding kicks and takedowns, it's another element. When you have a high-level boxer, and they've been doing this and they know how to fight, their instincts are reactive to boxing. Roundtree assured that anybody who's a high-level boxer has a fair chance in the UFC. However, he also warned that Garcia needs to incorporate some new techniques into his repertoire. No takedowns, 
he goes all five, takedowns included, he could get through the first round, it will be a rough second, but he could get through the first. The path for Garcia would not be easy in the MMA world. He would have to start from the bottom, and it could take him a year or two to reach the top of the cards. This, of course, assumes he dedicates himself full-time and shows the same dedication he had in the first stage of his boxing career. Coming back to what pros have to say about Ryan's one-year suspension, Fernando Vargas says that he was in a similar situation in his career, and it is possible that Ryan took a tainted supplement unintentionally. He also sent prayers for the Garcia family and hoped that they would move on from this situation eventually. Uh, you know, something happened to me in, in a cinnamon situation. I didn't know. Look, you trust these people that are a part of your team. It's not like, I guarantee you that, that, um, that he didn't know, Ryan didn't know what they're giving you. It's not like they're be injecting you with something. They're giving you supplement. a supplement. Yeah. And so you take it because those are the people that you trust. I did the same thing. So like, like, like the same thing happened to me. So at the end of the day, my, my hearts, you know, and my prayers are to the Garcia family. I wish them nothing but the best and I hope that this gets cleared up soon and uh, Robert Garcia says that Ryan Garcia is a big name for boxing, and him retiring and getting banned from the sport won't be a good thing. Ryan's a big name for boxing. He brings out a lot of attention to the boxing world. A lot of fans want to uh, tune in to watch his fights. So he's he's one of the you know one of those that, that brings in light welterweight title holder Teofimo Lopez believes that Garcia's one year suspension was going to be twice as long, and he's not sure how Team Garcia negotiated down to a year long exile from the sport. He stated, "You got to stay clean in this sport. A year suspension, it was going to be two years. Obviously, his team and his lawyer team definitely found a way to decrease the suspension. It gives him a whole year to really decide what is best for him and how clean he should come back to the sport. Whenever Garcia does return to the ring, Lopez could be among the first." First fighters he faces. The takeover last year turned down a $1.5 million offer from Garcia's team to fight King Ryan, but Lopez was complimentary of Garcia following his since vacated win over Haney, and it seems he would retain an interest in a showdown with him. Only time will tell. Shakur Stevenson thinks that the suspension should have been longer. He says that it should have been five years to make an example out of Ryan, to not cheat in the sport of boxing. Suspension, I know that it happens in boxing, heavy fines. I, and I think it should have been longer. Yeah. I think that if they say he was really cheating, see, I, I, I ain't really like that reading upon it. But if it's like confirmed that he was cheating and he's a cheater and he went in there and cheated to get that victory, um, I feel as though it should be a longer suspension. I don't think one year is enough. I think five would have been like, yeah, now that makes an example out of like somebody that cheated. Raleigh Romero doesn't understand why the 1.2 million purse goes to the Golden Boy promotion and not to the fighter who took the damage, that being Devin Haney. His old back, is, is that fair, you think? Or you think it should have been a little bit longer, a little bit worse? I, I mean, he, he ain't getting no money. <laughs> he ain't no damn money. Yeah, that, 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 there's something really off about that whole situation. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it has nothing to do with me. I don't give a fuck what happened right there, but man, why is it going to Golden Boy though? I don't know. I guess we, I guess we gotta ask, right? You know, because yeah. that, that 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 actually caught me off guard because I I don't know I don't know shit about that. You think it should go to the fighter though, right? It should be well, fine. Yeah, well, yeah, the fighter's the one that got injured, no? Yeah. Tim Bradley believes Ryan Garcia should have been given a two-year-to-life ban by the New York State Athletic Commission. Bradley feels that Ryan got off lucky with the NYSAC, giving him only a year, because they should have given him a lot more for testing positive for his fight against Divine Haney on April 20th. He stated, deal with the consequences. A year? He's lucky he got a year. It should have been two years or a life ban. The only way to stop this shit is you gotta nip it in the bud. You gotta give life ban for these guys. Get out of here with that. There are a ton of guys that are doing it now and getting away with it. This isn't Bradley's first public attack on Garcia. Earlier this year, after failed negotiations for a fight between Garcia and Raleigh Romero, Bradley disparaged Garcia, calling him a clown and suggesting he belonged in a zoo. In response, Garcia has threatened legal action against ESPN for allowing Bradley to make such comments.
France, accusing the network of a double standard in their handling of his case. Garcia has taken to social media to express his frustration, particularly with Bradley's recent comments regarding the New York State Athletic Commission guilty verdict on his PED usage. Bradley stated, The real villain and the real loser is Ryan Garcia. I am just keeping it 100. What are we doing? Why are we praising this guy? Why? In a heated response on X, Garcia insulted Bradley personally, saying, He is mad because his hair hasn't grown back since third grade, and his commentary skills are trash, cock a brain, referencing Bradley's baldness. When asked about the one-year suspension, Eddie Hearn noted that the swift resolution of Garcia's punishment was a positive outcome, suggesting it stemmed from a behind-closed-doors agreement between Garcia and the commission. Hearn stated, The punishment is good in terms of the speed with which the New York Athletic Commission resolved the issue. Hearn compared this situation to that of Connor Ben, whose doping case has dragged on for two years, severely impacting his career. Hearn elaborated, This is just my opinion, but when you somewhat accept guilt behind closed doors to reach an agreement, issues are resolved much quicker. When a fighter refuses to accept guilt, convinced of their innocence, like Connor Ben, you can't reach any agreement, and that's why we've been dealing with this for two years. Hearn acknowledged the smart legal maneuver by Garcia's lawyers, which allowed his suspension to start immediately, avoiding a prolonged legal battle. I think they resolved the problem well. They did something smart because they didn't want to fight the case or prove their innocence, so the punishment is only a year, which isn't a long time. My bigger concern is what will happen to Ryan Garcia during that year. Hearn was also asked if a rematch between Ryan and Haney is possible when the fighter comes back from his year-long suspensions. Hearn responded to this by saying who knows, signaling that the rematch might be a possibility. That rematch, I know that rematch, that's something that they both want. Haney and Ryan, let's it, it's, it's try to fast forward a little bit hypothetically to a year later. Could that be the first match for both of them coming back after a nice. year? Very nice. Devin Haney is also expected to take a lengthy break from the sport and has expressed a willingness to rematch Garcia once his rival has returned from his suspension. During an appearance on the MMA Hour, he said, I would love my next fight to be against Ryan Garcia if everything is right, if everything is inactive with the drug tests, but he's got to do his suspension and we've got to figure everything out. Of course, I want to get mine back in blood. I'm that kind of a fighter. Haney said that the rematch would be on his terms considering that Ryan cheated the first time. He stated, The next fight with Ryan Garcia will be on my terms. We caught the guy cheating. So, wherever the fight is at, it's going to be on my terms. I'm not fighting in weight classes anymore. I'm fighting any weight I choose. I love belts. Belts put you in history forever, but I did that already. For the sawanings that he did, I want to make him pay for the sawanings that he did in the ring, out the ring. Ryan has also put forward a potential rematch between the two fighters. Only time will tell if it happens or not. But recently, Ryan Garcia was seen training, signaling that the one-year suspension won't slow him down. <laughs> So what are your thoughts about this situation? Do you think that Ryan Garcia needs help? Should he make a move to the UFC? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.